Thank you everyone for coming, um, as Jeremy said, on the coldest day of the year so far. Um, and I'm really privileged to be sharing this uh, stage with such amazing speakers. Um, and thank you, Kate, also for, for uh, moderating. Uh, I, I usually start by um, talking about how Julian's doing. And uh, the Christmas that we just had was actually the worst, um, the worst so far, because uh, always during Christmas there are less visits, and um, he also got uh, quite sick, although he's, he's recovered. Um, and then John Pilger died, and this was just such a, a terrible end to the year, because as, as you all know, I'm sure, um, John Pilger wasn't just someone that Julian admired professionally, they had developed uh, a close friendship over the years. Uh, you know, I, when I think of the two of them together, um, it's sitting at the table, sharing anecdotes and laughing uh, loudly. Uh, and it's, it's a real loss. And I think John Pilger's passing is really difficult because when, when you're in, when a person is in prison, you have to think about the things that you hope will happen when you get out, the things that you will do again. And over the years, the fact is that many of the things that you hoped would happen will never come to pass. Um, and uh, Julian spending time with his good friend, John Pilger, is one of those things, and it's very painful. However, I think it's so important that we um, that you and we continue this fight for Julian, but also in memory of those who are no longer here, Vivian Westwood, John Pilger, Daniel Ellsberg, and many more, who dedicated so much of their lives uh, to fighting for Julian's freedom on principle, but also uh, because they were, uh, they cared about him as a human being. Uh, and it's, it's very sad to me that they won't be able to see uh, Julian free. Uh, because I do believe that we will get him free. Yes. So, John, John Pilger's passing really got me thinking about the passage of time, obviously, as I just said. Um, and also about how uh, you know, when, when I have interviews and so on, I say, well, this was back in 2013 or something, and, and a lot of um, these uh, events I have in my head as if they were just yesterday, but when you think about it, it's 11 years ago, already 2013. Um, and Julian was just 39 when, when WikiLeaks published the uh, Chelsea Manning uh, revelations. It was 2010, and he was 39, and then he was 41 when he got political asylum in the embassy of Ecuador. In 2019, he was 47 when he was arrested. And now, after almost five years, he'll turn uh, 53 this year. That is, is a, a long time, from 39 to 53, uh, without being a, a free man and increasingly having your liberty restricted more and more to such a degree that now he's, um, he's in a, a single cell for 21, 22, 23 hours a day, depending on the day, um, alone, and isolated from the world. And our, our eldest child, Gabriel, he was two when Julian got, uh, was, was uh, imprisoned, and he's going to turn seven. That's a long time. And this, when Julian isn't even charged in this country, when what he's actually accused of is completely ludicrous and antithetical to uh, a real democratic, open um, democratic system. It's not newsworthy, though, is it? 
What's being done to Julian is by design. It is there to intimidate, to intimidate um, regular citizens, but also to intimidate journalists, people who are in the pr profession. And um, I think it's really a, a, it's there to, to give an example of authoritarian abuse to the world. And, and to, and to uh, claim that they can get away with it while saying that they're a democracy. Uh, or democracies, because this isn't just about one country. Um, so, uh, many of you already know what, what Julian's accused of. He's accused of telling the truth, of practicing journalism. And, um, but he's, he's beyond that, right? He's not just a journalist or a publisher. He's the most consequential political prisoner of our times. Because he, he reveals the incoherence, the contradictions of liberal democracies. What he revealed wasn't just, you know, the way torture was institutionalized during the Bush years, or how um, the State Department was spying on, on uh, diplomats at the UN in New York and getting their, uh, their uh, fingerprints and so on. It wasn't just that. It was also about how European countries like Sweden were um, getting into deals with the United States government behind the back of the Swedish parliament to avoid parliamentary oversight. So it, 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 was, it revealed a whole um, system of uh, avoiding democratic process oversight accountability. And that's the, the, the really embarrassing part, that it had been baked into the system the way um, power operates, because it's not like it, there was no reform um, afterwards. It was just embarrassing, like uh, the emperor was caught naked. And one of these, uh, one of the examples of the importance of the publications. Uh, in fact, Julian is uh, indicted in relation to the rules of engagement in Iraq, and uh, I think he faces 30 or 40 years just in relation to the rules of engagement. This was the publication of collateral murder together with the rules of engagement. Basically the rules um, that determine when you can kill a person in, in war. And Chelsea Manning actually did an interview with Louis Theroux, which is on the BBC, which is interesting to watch, and, and she really kind of explained her motives for leaking that information. And it's not just about how the collateral murder video that you saw um, was covered up by the United States saying, oh, it was all fine according to our rules of engagement. As Julian says in, in one of the interviews, is, well, if that, those are the rules of engagement, then um, they're, uh, they, they violate international law. It's not just that. It's about those young soldiers who are sitting in, in the helicopter, who are killing those people, who then go back to the United States or to Britain with PTSD, and then you end up with an epidemic of suicides because these young men and women are put in a situation, a system that is uh, corrupt, that, is, uh, that leads to these kinds of killings. And only a tiny minority of people, even if they behaved in, in that way at that time, can live with themselves after that. So it's not just about the victims um, of war in the moment, it's the victims that war creates through the perpetrators as well. So, um, anyway, I, I think from my standpoint, the support for Julian is amazing and incredible. And it's a global movement. It's here in the UK when we were around standing, um, doing the Hands Around Parliament protest. That was an incredible day. And we got 10,000 people, I don't know how many, but it took, you know, we, we made a, a ring around Parliament on do, both sides of the Thames, um, holding hands in support of Julian's freedom. 
and um, this is mirrored all over the world. Uh, in Italy, I am absolutely amazed by Italy because uh, there are about um, there are dozens of, of towns and cities that are uh, getting that are uh, proposing honorary citizenship for Julian, and he is now an honorary citizen citizen of Naples. He has been approved to be an honorary citizen of Rome just uh, yesterday. Uh, and they're, they're aiming for a hundred towns and cities around Italy to make him honorary citizen. In, I'm going to Strasbourg at the beginning of February and we're going to hold, to have a, an exhibition there at the European Parliament. Um, displaying the dozens and dozens of awards that Julian has won for the highest distinctions in journalism, in human rights, uh, of integrity. About 20, um, 20 uh, unions, journalist unions, have made him either full or honorary member in Europe, including the National Union of Journalists. And um, I Every, every few weeks I have to travel and, and collect a new award from Julian. There's incredible recognition for him. And don't let anyone convince you that no one cares or that people aren't mobilizing or that um, people are, are uh, apathetic about this case. It's on the contrary. Uh, this case is the most talked about case in the world internationally. I mean, you had Lula da Silva opening the UN General Assembly in, in September, talking about Julian in his opening speech. He was third, I think, in the lineup. And the, the uh, hall, with all these heads of state, just um, uh, spontaneously erupted into applause. You don't get that normally. You don't get that ever. Um, Julian is a symbol for, um, the ability to, to tell the truth. And sure, um, you know, different countries have different motivations to talk about him, but he is the most important political prisoner of our times. Yes. And he represents true democratic accountability. And that, that uh, his uh, importance uh, cannot be uh, suppressed uh, not by the mainstream media, not by, um, not by anyone. It transcends all of that, and that's why there's a global movement for his, for his uh, freedom. So on the 20th and the 21st, as you know, Day X is here. Uh, the hearing, which um, is likely the final hearing in the UK courts, it will be at the Royal Courts of Justice, and we need everyone to be there. All of you, and at least two other people that you can bring. Yeah. And uh, we're meeting at 8.30 in front of the courts on both days. And on the second day, the 21st, when the hearing concludes, we're going to march uh, to Downing Street. So please join me on that day. For Julian, for, for all of us, for the future of a free, open society uh, where Free, free speech and free press um, actually has a future. And um, it's now or never. Thank you.